Cheers, everybody. We are back for another edition of Bourbon on a Budget. It is review time. And as we told you guys on Tuesday, we are reviewing none other than Caw, Eagle Caw. Rare. That didn't sound anything like anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Eagle Rare, again, keeping with the very patriotic theme, This earlier this week we celebrated July 4th. It's been, America. Uh, a lot of years since 1776 and the Declaration of Independence was signed. I'm not going to do the math. This is a bourbon podcast, not a math podcast. But, 264. But that's wow. wrong. Appreciate uh, you guys tuning in. Brendan, tell yep. us about Eagle Rare. Uh, if you guys only knew how long it took to get to this episode, TJ took forever. So Eagle Rare is a straight bourbon from Buffalo Trace Distillery. It's proofed at 90, so 45%, aged 10 years. It has the classic Buffalo Trace mash bill of one. So it's low rye mash bill believed to be like 10% or less. MSRP, fellas, help me out here. It's like a between 30 and 35 MSRP, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. how, how often are we finding it for 30 to 35? Uh, Walmart, yeah, yeah. probably the only place you would find it for that. Maybe Publix. I, I Costco, saw it. Costco. I got one second, and I got two or three of them for twenty seven dollars. Which, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this at. Uh, I got mine. Or, well, the one that I'm drinking is actually a store pick, but I got one yeah. uh -huh. not too long ago at uh, Party Liquors here in town for like thirty two bucks. So it's not impossible. I feel like it's. It's not it's not easy, but by about the time you need it again, you can find it. You kind of have to search for it. It's I mean, it, that's what I was gonna say. It's one that's it it's not jacked up a ton for price. Like when you see it, it's just hard to find, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, mine's a double store pick, so it's Whoa. a little more rare than than TJ's, but how's it a double know. store pick? <laughs> it's fifty dollars. You know, it's double store. Uh, two two store picks blended. Uh, so. that's what it, You're awesome. welcome. Um one thing I will say about Eagle Rare before we get going is it's like Buff one, it's two things I guess I'm gonna say. It's Buffalo Trace's big brother, right? Buffalo Trace is about seven, eight years old. This is 10 years guaranteed. Uh, it used to be a single barrel before I was into bourbon, maybe even before Ben was into bourbon. Uh, now, standard, it, it's not single barrel, but that doesn't mean you can't get it as a single barrel. Like the guys could, could get the store pick, but also like this bottle that I have here could be from a single barrel. They just can't assure it. They can't guarantee because they're having to crank it out so much uh, for so many people want uh, Eagle Rare. I said crank it out. Never mind, just keep going. I made um, this is not the first time we're reviewing Eagle Rare either. It is the first time we're reviewing that, Eagle Rare. For those that don't remember, tell us about uh, tell us about why we're reviewing this again, Brendan. <laughs> because for April Fool's Day, we TJ and I it was TJ's idea. I played along with it like the lemming I am. Decided to tease Ben to fool him because uh, it's April Fools and have him review what was Eagle Rare, but him think it was Basil Hayden. And Ben trash it. What did he give it, TJ, on a scale of 1 to 10? Not a very good score, right? Uh, three something? I maybe, maybe, no. Maybe. It was not three. A 4.75 4. with value included. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 4.75. So if my palate is superior and as we refined, shouldn't have told it. We shouldn't then have told I it. will now give this again a 4.75. No. The power suggestion really took over there, and so – Anyway, ben, Brendan and I probably rated a little bit low too because we were obviously in on the joke, but we didn't want to rate it like amazingly and Ben be like, wow, why are they giving this thing that we all hate like such a great score? So hope to see all of our scores rise here um, for a quick refresher. The first time we did it, Brendan gave it a 7 out of 10. I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. Again, Ben with a 4.75. So we'll see if my 6.5 or Brendan's 7 comes up at all. Um Basically, Buffalo Trace reached out to us. They complained that their <laughs> score was too low. <clears throat> they asked us to redo it. So, you know, you're welcome, Buffalo Trace. This one's on us. Stop, stop calling us. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll call you. Um, talk to us about the nose, Brendan. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. Um, all right, so I'm getting intense maple syrup on this brown sugar. Very sweet, very pleasant, but also like a little bit of like wood tannin uh, oakiness and almost like a minty like intensity as well to go along with that sweetness uh cherry apple too there's a lot going on here it's a really pretty really pretty really sweet nose but a little bit of complexity going on too what about you ben yeah i don't get what was the last thing you said minty 
I don't get I am getting much this, like it's it's harsh. I don't know. It's it's yeah. spiky. I guess I don't get much mint. I get more like maybe like a dark fruit, like a I don't know, like a, like a raisin caramel, like a, yeah. I mean, definitely like a little bit of oakiness, not too much vanilla, but like a raisiny, caramely, taffy. No, not taffy. Toffee. 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 Toffee coffee. I could see that. I could see toffee. It is, it's got this great blend of like, it's, it smells dark and brown. Does that make sense? <laughs> Does that make sense? It's like so it dark, dark brown. Dark brown. That's how I'm smelling. Yeah, maybe dark brown sugar. Yeah, I was going to say colors don't have, I mean, like, for some besides, people, besides can, orange. Some people can have. see music and I can yeah, smell there colors because there are notes. Speaking uh, of notes, what about what about you, TJ? <laughs> yeah, a what lot kind of notes you like, pick it up. Yeah, Oof, that? the best. That was the best worst transition that I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of sugar, um, a lot of sweet, a lot of caramel. I kind of like the brown sugar take there. A fruity, citrusy, something is there but I, yeah i'm i'm with ben too some of that dark dark fruit i don't I, we always just say cherry and so like that's just what i'm gonna go with but yeah i think it's cherry. missing a lot of brightness like I, I don't get any citrus notes apple notes like i feel like it should be a little bit brighter and maybe it's just, an, it's just an older version of of buffalo trace that's what you get but i feel like it's really like heavy I do yeah, get red I, apple. I, I'm, I'm getting a little get, bit of the apple too. Yeah. yeah, I am with you. I don't get the citrusy on the nose. The palate, if we want to transition, I. I oh, do we want to transition? Sorry. Yeah. No. Yeah, let's okay. do it. All right. No, I I am getting orange peel very much so on the actual palate. Uh, in addition to like this herbaly kind of like, like almost like a like a black tea, uh, but that's going along with the oak, the vanilla, the caramel. Like those are the more dominant ones. But I'm getting citrusy note there on the taste uh, and again that, that little bit of i don't know do, do i sound crazy for saying like an herbal like tea kind of and again that mintiness i don't know why but that, that's what i'm that's what i'm picking up i can definitely see where like a little bitterness of like a black tea like an unsweet mm -hmm. tea you know i'm definitely on board with that because i don't get too much i don't get too much very warm like citrus bright like honey notes on it I like guess it's, it's more of like on the on the, the darker spectrum, so at least consistent with the the nose for me. Yep, consistency. What about it's you? 90, it's ninety proof. It's very approachable. Very easy to drink. Um, not super heavy. Not super thick. What would you call that? A low viscosity, Brendan. You you right. Ooh, there you go. Mouth, yeah, mouth feel. Mouth yeah. feel of viscosity sounds good. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. A lot of sweet. Um. Very easy to drink, and then I, I don't want to just repeat all the notes that you guys get. Uh, get it's but, but it's good. Finish. How's it? Fin I think okay. So I'll start with this one since you guys went first in the last couple. Yeah, I think it finishes better than um, I was expecting for a ninety proof. Like I do think that it holds on and it stays with you through the finish pretty well. Um, don't get a lot of like the pepper notes that we get a lot on finishes. I know that it's tough. Um, or it's the lower rye blend, right? Like Mashville one. Um, but it stays consistent, sweet on the finish, but it, it kind of holds on a little longer than I was expecting. Um, Brendan, where do you, what are you picking up on the finish? Uh, yeah. I don't know if it like, so I'm getting like the first word I could think of with it is crisp. Like there's this, a crisp refreshing element to the finish, which is kind of weird for a bourbon. Right. But I, but I am definitely, getting this almost like a crisp apple a caramel too so maybe like a caramel apple a little bit on the finish like there's a lot of flavor on the finish normally just like a little bit of a bird or a spice note like you said tj to me there's actually flavor still unfolding through the finish and kind of sticking there uh after you, you finish it and to me that's impressive because that's not something that i normally am able to get in a bourbon and it unfolds very nicely uh what about you ben yeah i don't disagree uh i think it's probably a better finish than your other bottles at 30 bucks. I'm just in my head trying to go through like what I can find similarly at, at this price point or lower. Um, I mean, to give you some ideas Four roses, small batch, um, uh, Woodford yeah. reserve, Elijah Craig, small batch that things that we've reviewed. Uh, nah, three so forward, I would uh, say, I would say this is probably better, better finish at that, at those price points in my make, opinion. 
Maker's Mark, um, obviously the, the Russells that we did originally, Buffalo Trace, yeah. Wild Turkey 101, which is a little lower, Will It Pot still. Um, so, yeah, just, just mm-hmm. to kind of give you some answers there. To me, I, I'm getting more of like the uh, like the black, black tea at the end. Mm. Like, it finishes a little bitter, and so I feel like that's just more of that black tea kind of profile coming out in my the way I'm interpreting that in my my palette, right? So yeah, not bad. Um all right, let's rate it. Remember our scores last time were not great. Let's see if they got any better this time. Nose mm, Ben. <laughs> yeah. I really enjoy the nose on this. This is probably my favorite part. Um I'm making you go first every round by the way. Jeez. Uh so I'm gonna go one and this is out of two, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of two. So out of two, I'm thinking it's probably I'm really between like one and a quarter, one and a half. But since it's the best, I would go one and a half, probably. One and a half. Quick reminder, um, I wish probably should have done this before Ben rated. Nose, two points, taste four, finish one, cohesiveness and complexity, one point, and then value two after that. Uh, Brendan, nose. I went with 1.5 on the nose. I agree with Ben. This is the best part of the entire profile for the bourbon. It's yeah. really pleasant nose. And and to me, it hits a lot of the things that I like, too. It's got that brown sugar, that maple syrup, that sweetness. It, it's really good and a little bit of complexity on the nose, too. Um, I like the nose as well, and I'm, I don't know that I like it enough to go 175, so I got to make it the trifecta here. We'll all go 1.5. 1.5. Uh, taste out of four points. Ben, start with you again. I don't know if this eclipses the three mark for me or just dances along the edge. A little dance, a little tippy tap. Yeah, a little on the fence. I think this is probably a 275. Damn it. In my head, okay. 275. Uh, Brendan, you the same, just, the same, uh, same. Yeah, two point seven five. I hate it, like when I go right down the line with. with Whoa. Come on, TJ, what you got? What do you got? I'm going two point five here. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> It, that see TJ's usually Come on like, board the, the like, train, he, baby. He's the sweetie, like the sweet, the sweet lover, the little uh is it yeah, I, sweet on the I lied. I lied. I'll go, I'll go. I don't mean yes. the same as you guys. 2.75. Make it yeah, losers. A losers. Of sweet, but a little bit of herbalness. Come yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Finish. Uh Ben. Yeah, not my favorite finish. I'm probably gonna go. Probably 0.25 or, or just average, average, average 0.5. You know, it's okay. probably where it is. Damn it. Uh, Brendan. 0.5. I thought we were going to deviate. Yeah. Get on the it, it, it is an average finish. It's nice. It's pleasant. It just doesn't wow me at all. Uh, but TJ, you might have a little bit of a gripe with that. Yeah. The yeah, nose I'll bump, is great. I'll bump it up just a tad and go 0.75. I think it's slightly above average. And since we're not doing like eighths or sixteenths of points, like mm-hmm. 0.75 is all that I can do. Um, yeah, we curious. still so can. We can, we can alter it. All right. No, we're not. My math is bad enough with quarters. So um, I, I think it's slightly above average. I think it it finishes a little bit better than what I was expecting. And so to me, that's an above average finish. Um mm-hmm. You know, when you consider price and proof and everything else, I, I think it's pretty good there. So, uh, cohesiveness and complexity, Ben, I'll I'll give it to you for the you have the floor. Yeah, 0. 0.75. It's above average, but not ultra complex. But 0. 0.75. Brendan. Yeah, I was going between 0. 0.75 and one for the reason that 0. 0.75 that Ben was saying. Um, I'm still not entirely sure on it. Like, I think we've got more complex bourbons. Um, but there's a nice amount of complexity to this. Ah, I can't decide. 0. 0.75. 0. 0.75. I'll if you guys just want me to review everything by myself from now on and just put your names under it, then that's fine. Just let me how know. about you review Basil Hayden? Yeah. How yeah. about we tell? How about we don't tell you what it is <laughs> when you review it? Um. So Ooh. I'll go with a one here. I think it's both cohesive and complex. I, I will say I don't think it's the most cohesive or the most complex thing we've ever had, mm-hmm. but. It checks both the boxes, and so I'm just kind of going back to the old school method of doing yeah. it and saying that it gets the full point from me. Um, our scores before value: Ben is at a five point five, Brendan is at a five point five, and I'm at a six. So you guys thought I was being hard on it, but I, I was actually I wasn't. Mm. Um, so five point five, Ben and Brendan out of eight. We're calling this above average. It is tough to find. So value may take a little bit of a hit just for availability, but for price, 
can't, can't beat the price um, to, to get something nearly, you know, we, we're all essentially right, right at six or right under six out of eight, mm -hmm. uh, very above average um, to good. Availability is tough. Proof's kind of low um, with, with 90, you know, kind of the lowest that we all typically like, right? Yeah. Don't like going a lot lower than 90, but uh, two points for value, Ben, start us off. So I got a long windy road for this one. Uh, we're going to end eventually at, at a one, but to get there, I think this is a solid bourbon for 35 bucks. The problem though, is you're not going to get it for 35. It's going to be something that's you're to pay up for and for like 45 or 50 bucks. And it's rare. A lot of places are going to mark this up, right? E Eagle um, rare. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. USA. But, USA. But that being said, you go into the point that TJ made a couple episodes back on this being like a great gift for 35 bucks or 40. If you can get it great, that's solid. So like to me, you're adding value if you can gift it to somebody and it's like, oh, it's worth more than if I give you a $35 gift card, right? The problem is the next the next jump up though is Blanton's, which you're either paying 60 or 100 bucks for. You're usually not gonna pay 60 and you're gonna go pay 100 bucks. So for half the price, it's still somewhat special. So I like that. So docking it for availability, but giving it an increase on gift ability, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go one. I would like to point out that you gave this a 1.25 last time and you had it rated lower, Hayden, um, which, is, which is more money. So like, I don't know how you, well, you're thinking Basil Hayden was, no, no, available. we told him, we told him value. We told him, we told him before the oh, value. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we told him when we got to the value, cause we didn't want him to rate it. Okay. I mean, one and a quarter then. There you go. <laughs> rig it. It's rigged. This is rigged. This is a totally scientific. I don't know how you could give it. I don't know how you could like it more and give it a lower. Uh, I don't score. keep all my <laughs> records. I'm not, I, you know, Mr. I Excel do. spreadsheet. I do. Okay, um, well then thanks for correcting me. 1.25. <laughs> there you go. Oh, <laughs> uh, Brendan value. Um, I mean, so what we got here is a well above average bourbon, 10 years, right? Um oh yeah, that's a good point. At a at a good price, if you can find it. I think I would spend, if I didn't have any, see, I usually have like two deep in my collection. So I thought if I was out of it, right, I would probably pay like 45 to $50 for this bourbon. Eh, 45 is probably the cutoff to where I'd feel like, okay, that's yeah. probably worth it. So uh, if I could find it for 30 to 35 and it's not in my collection at any point, or if I have one left and I can find it there, like what I'm saying is that this is a good bourbon at a good price, even though it's hard to find the, that, that limits it somewhat for value, but I'm going 1.5 for the value it is still one of the best bourbons for the bang for the buck that you can find out there if you can find it yeah i think i'm the same uh i think i'm the same as brendan with a 1.5 what i'll tell you is i think that it is tough to get and it's tough to get a hold of um but i don't think it's as tough as we're making it out to be to get a hold of we've all gotten it and we've all had access to get it in store pick variety at different stores right been just thinking about getting it at 35 dollars for a store pick yeah, yeah but, but the you're, store getting, pick you're getting it like you're getting yeah, it for like 45 50 45 it, more yeah by me it was like 60 65. bucks it's 65 for that for yeah, sure no, no. for store pick. i've only ever, i've never seen it by i've never seen it more than 45 or 50 at a store 50 pick. bucks but, is a store pick for us. And, and I think that that, I think that's worth it. I think, no, that, I think I would, adding, I would go against that. I, I think uh, you're adding to it. I think, I think it becomes, if you like the store you're picking it from, right? Like if it's somebody that you're liking their taste profiles and I've been able, I've seen it at several stores around us. Yeah. Now it's not there long, but the yeah. opportunity to get it at Lucan's or, uh, liquor depot near us or gas bars or David off, or wherever burns it exists and you see it fairly often so if i can get it for 10 more dollars at 45 bucks i'm okay with that like I, I think that still kind of falls within the budget realm i mean we gave this a uh before going anywhere we gave this like a 5.5 and a 6 right so we said it was above average before we got to value mm -hmm. so maybe at 45 dollars, i dropped my value down to like a point or a point and a quarter but i i still think it's I mean, I'm I'm spending the extra ten bucks. Like, if there's two on a shelf, 
I'm getting the store pick as opposed to the regular one. I'm paying the extra 10 bucks. That's a good question. If there's two sitting on a shelf and you're going to buy one of them, are you buying the store pick or are you buying the regular? Store, uh, regular one. All Not, day. Yeah, see, I'm regular I'm all day. Opposite. Because if they offer this in barrel proof or anything higher than 90, then at, it's at, worth at, it. But at barrel proof, it's $90. I think that's, it's $60. If it was 60 bucks at barrel proof or 60 at 100 proof, I pay that and be happy about it, right? Have you have you guys but ever had the 90. 17 year one? No. Oh, no. That's $50 a pour, not $50 a bottle. <laughs> no, yes I did. Didn't I? Yeah, I did. I did. We talked about it on the show. I had it at that bar. At, uh, right for at David off. Oh, it was a special. Before. It was a special occasion one, wasn't it? I can't remember. I was just Hopefully by myself. Hopefully, you're just not out there. That's no, every night. Just, he usually yeah, just goes and grabs it. That's just like his Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, I was just his work lunch. I was just wanting a little, uh, <laughs> a little pick me up. So, anyway, um, this conversation reminds not, me of two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. I remember it was maybe three at this point. Asking a whiskey group, hey, is Colonel E.H. Taylor, which is the same mash bill as this. It's 10 years as well, just 50%, so 100 proof and bottled and bond. Uh, so it's a, it's a slightly better version of this. I remember asking people, hey, is this a good value at $45? I found it in a store. I mean, can you imagine finding E.H. Taylor for $45? I did last week. Well, must be nice. But yes. <laughs> uh, Brendan, Split the tie here. There's two two of these on a, on a shelf at Market Square. One's a store pick, one's not. Ten dollar difference. What you, what are you buying? Uh, for ten dollar difference, so it's thirty five to forty five. I probably go forty five for the store pick. Yeah, I don't think you're getting us at forty five. I haven't well, seen them before. They're, they're at forty nine ninety nine. I got one with the scenario that was presented to. Yeah, me. And I got mine from Lukens at forty five. I would forty five. Yeah, Liquor Depot was, was like forty nine nine. Okay, nine, I got nine. mine. I got mine. Lucas for forty five. I the think it's by me was possible. sixty to sixty five dollars for the store pick. If I recall See, correctly, that's too much. That's way too much. Shout out Lucas and Liquor Depot. So, <laughs> um, yeah, go to them for in Tampa if you'd like to sponsor the show. Yeah, um, shut up. But uh, you also by buying the store pick at Liquor Depot. I know that we didn't ask about this. You also got entered into a. Uh, raffle to be able to buy something buy something else that was rare or something i don't know you win a bottle but anyway that that was well in the past i lost that raffle so yeah clearly <laughs> um all right i think that's all the time we have for tonight thank you guys for hanging out again all the social medias it's bourbon on a budget go check it out if you're listening or watching this upvote on youtube five stars on itunes if you're on spotify or soundcloud or stitcher or something like that like i get your life together and listen on a better platform um, but thank you for checking us out. Sorry to offend you. For myself, TJ Pittenger, Brendan Sinone, and Ben Cock. See you guys next week. Cheers. Cheers.